problem that I seem to have to deal with that I'm really kind of getting tired of. The problem is me. I'm kind of tired of dealing with me, you know? I got all these problems and issues, you know? Seems like every time I turn around, I'm sinning or doing something stupid, you know? If I'm not doing something stupid, then I'm saying something stupid. You know, I just don't seem to have a handle on it. You know, it just seems like every time that I want to, like, you know, be one of those saints, I wind up a sinner. I don't get it. And I, I read about it, and I see all these other people who seem like they're so perfect. You know, and they, they tell me to be perfect. And they tell me to, you know, like, get my act together and, Man, I don't know, you know, I just seem to have a problem with this Christianity thing, you know, it seems to, seems to want me to be perfect, and I just can't seem to get there. Hmm. You ever had that problem? You see, a lot of our problems are not necessarily based on somebody out there, like even Satan himself out there. A lot of times the problem is right here. And I'm not talking about the man in the mirror. I'm talking about the person inside. We're talking about spiritual reality. So, you know, it's easy to pretend that, you know, it's always the other guy. You know, like, yeah, you know, they got some kind of weird religious idea. Or, I'm not like them. They're like, ooh. Cuckoos, you know they've got the cuckoo list. <laughs> they they make the top of the cuckoo list. They got the cuckoos down. <laughs> they know what cuckoo cuckoo is, you know. And then there's the wacky khakis who, no matter what you do, there's always a conspiracy just for you. <laughs> Little do they know the conspiracy is all spiritual, and that what you see is already happening in the spiritual realm, but. They, you know, got it down for what the physical part is. It's that nasty government. <laughs> no, it's not the principalities or powers or spiritual wickedness, you know. It's not those things that we can't see. It's only the things we can see. <laughs> oh, it's not, you know, vagarities. It's flesh and blood that we're fighting and warring against. <laughs> the problem is right here. It's me. I just don't have the ability to be God. You know, and I really don't have the capability to be His Holy Spirit. Oh, maybe sometimes I think I do. Maybe I've been given certain abilities that make me strong and long and mean and green. You know, I'm a Marine. <laughs> but... The reality is, if you look really close, I mean really close, if you zoom in on the minutiae of my attitude, I don't think I'm so righteous after all. As a matter of fact, you know what? I don't think I qualify for that gold star in heaven. As a matter of fact, I don't think I get the silver star. I'm kind of wondering if I get any star. Because I know, really, if I sit down long enough to admit it, I know what kind of sinner I am. You know what's funny? Not only do I know what kind of sinner I am. I know what kind of sinner you are, dude. Matter of fact, I'm pretty confident that you fall down at least seven times, maybe more. Matter of fact, I'm pretty confident that you're just as corrupted as I am. Matter of fact, I think that you have just as much a problem as I do. So, let's see if I can get this straight. 
I know the problem is in me. You know the problem is in you. So, do we solve the problem by pointing fingers at each other? It's your problem. Your problem. That problem. They did it. They did it. Who did it? We did it. Or, could it be, maybe, the reason we don't have this unity is I'm the problem. Maybe we, who really are spiritual, ought to bear the problems of those who are fleshy. Maybe we don't have to prove ourselves right in order to get along with those who maybe aren't right. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? You think you can wiggle your nose and it'll just go away? Tug on an ear and it'll disappear? Do you think Jesus was just kidding when he said that by this shall you know that you're my disciples indeed and that you have love for one another. Oh, but I do have love for one another. I love everybody that agrees with me. Okay. Whatever you say. I don't know about you, but I think part of the problem, matter of fact, I think your problem is me because I'll take the blame. Jesus did. Why not me? So you see, I'm the problem. You're not. Or are you? I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The mighty God, who made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. For that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So, Jesus, I think, being God, could have just said, Hey, you know what, I think I'll start over and wipe it all out and just create it. But instead, so that we have no excuse... He came like us. Ooh, dude, you one of us? Hey, compadre! So that he would also taste death. And we also would be resurrected because he was. So we should be like him. He thought himself not to be God or to assume the powers of God because he was, but he humbled himself. Man, there you go again, messing up the apple cart. What's your problem? Why are you always telling me things like turn the other cheek, love your enemies, you know, all that yucky stuff, you know, that stupid stuff that, you know, nobody can do it. I mean, come on, let's be real, you know, if, 
if somebody came up and was going to shoot you, you know, or shoot your wife, you know, or shoot your kids, you know, you know darn well you wouldn't turn the other cheek. Really? Try me. You see, some people, when the moment is there, God will unveil the revelation of what he can do in moments of crisis. So you can pretend a certain set of circumstances and throw it out there and say, oh, but if that's not, that's not being ethical or moral, that's not like, like uh, being responsible. I think it's called trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I think it is like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Whether we die or whether we live, we live unto the Lord and we die unto the Lord. I think it's like Daniel. Has God spared you, Daniel? Yep, he just stopped the lion's mouth. So, Every time you hear someone say, oh, no, don't love your enemies, you know, we can't be that radical. You can't tell me that, you know, we're supposed to be doormats for Jesus. I'll tell you, I would rather be a doormat for Jesus than a soldier for Satan. Because, frankly, any idiot can pull a trigger. But not many can lay down their lives for their enemy, much less for their friend. The reality is your faith will come to a place where you will reveal where the issues are and the problem is. And it's right here in a little thing called your heart. And until you have that changed, you can't do the things you think you can. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that took for him shall he appear the second time, without sin unto salvation. He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and they, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I don't know for sure what you think the problem is. I don't know for sure what the problem might be for you to recognize I'm the problem because when I know I'm the problem then I confess my sins and he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness but as long as I deny myself that criteria of knowing that I am the sinner and you are the saint then I think you may find that the righteousness you have is as filthy rags and that you must start with yourself and not judge others. Because what Jesus said to do, what Jesus mentioned on the Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus talked about, he ended with a very interesting statement. If you read the end of it, oh, somewhere in Matthew, you know, I think it's seven at the very end of the chapter, maybe eight or nine. And he said, if you do these things, 
Oh, wait a minute. And now, wait a minute. You don't mean do these things. You mean like if we make these our goal. If you do these things. No, you don't mean that, Lord. You, you, you don't mean do like what you're saying to do. You mean like cast out demons in your name and resurrect the dead in your name and do everything in your name and start a religion in your name and start, you know, claiming in your name and, you know, Lord, haven't we done all those things for you? Isn't that enough? If you do these things, turn the other cheek, love your enemy, heal the sick, raise the dead, care, lay down your life, then you are my disciples indeed, in that you have love for one another. How do you define love? It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And it's easy to love those that love you. But you see, the problem isn't only me. The problem is you too. <laughs>